timber stand improvement, making the tree stand at the Oxbow. Everybody. Well, it's day two here in uh, Iowa and Missouri. I just rode in on the uh, four-wheeler. Uh, this morning we had about an inch and a half of snow. Didn't think we'd get any shed hunting in today, but um, we took a ride down to Missouri, check out the properties down there, make sure I was you know, good enough acquainted with the roads so that in the fall we can get in there on our own, me and Bobby. Uh, and we checked out a couple of parking spots where we'll go um, We'll go this fall and uh and we rode back and by the time we got back all the snow was gone so i'm back out in the woods uh gonna do some shed hunting for the afternoon i'm solo i don't have blake or um or brett with me but uh that's cool uh brett's actually working on a tree stand right now and scott's taking care of the grandkids so um i just rode the four-wheeler in and um this is a stand called the oak dam uh, the river's down below, we're on a high ridge, and if you recall in my Iowa hunt, I had about six bucks walk past me, coming right under this tree stand, which the tree stand is right behind me in this big giant oak. Beautiful ladder stand, uh, really a great, uh, great stand. So I'm going to uh, start hitting the uh, ridges up here and work my way down a little bit towards the river. And we'll get back with you in a bit. Hopefully we'll find some nice sheds. All right. This is a good spot down here. I mean, look at this deer trail. This is a heavily used deer trail. And last fall when I was bow hunting from this tree stand right here I had half the bucks that saw went through this food plot came right down this trail you can see they've continued to use it all winter long and this is gonna be a spot to find some sheds I'm sure So if I follow this ridge, I'm going to head down to the cottonwood stand, which is another spot that has a lot of bedding cover, a lot of these cedars, and uh, you can see some of these oaks. I mean, they're just big, huge, white oaks. Had a good acorn crop last year. down off of this uh, this ridge and you got this big flat down here which is a lot of tall grass and the river is right out along those tree lines across this flat of grass that's all the uh, the Grand River so it's just a beautiful area I'm sure the deer bed up in here when the wind is right they've got uh, they've got their backside cover they can see out in front of them a long way just an awesome spot and that tree stand is just in an awesome location well, I've been traversing the uh, the hill that comes from Oak Dam down towards Cottonwood in this big field down here I'm gonna hit this big field and look at this deer trail I'm on right in front of me it intersects with this one that runs perpendicular to it runs up and down the edge I'm gonna hit this food plot out here because this is a this was a clover and grass food plot I'm gonna hit the edges of that and work my way back up through this bedding cover. It's 
Oh, beautiful here. This is absolutely deer hunting paradise. My only, uh, my only regret is that you can't hunt Iowa every year being a non-resident, but that's the good part about all the properties they bought in Missouri. I can come down and hunt Missouri, which is only 20 minutes away, and, uh, and hunt Iowa every fourth year, as long as I don't forget to put in my permits. Come to the end of that food plot. There's the cottonwood stand. This is a great stand. I love sitting in this stand because the river is right over here. I walk to the edge of the river. This food plot here was good. You could see all across the river over there. there was a lot of deer at first light over there, and that's where I saw a real big buck follow a uh, doe with a couple of fawns. And they walked down that bank and the fawns and the doe crossed down just by that fallen log down there in the river. And the buck was about five minutes behind him. And then he chased the doe over there, just beyond this food plot. And about five minutes later, two more bucks chased her back. So there was three big bucks running back across here. I was so wishing that she would have brought them up through here and come up this way. I could have got a shot at them, but this, uh, this is a beautiful spot. And uh, this is a great stand. A lot of bedding cover up in the cedars up there, so I'm gonna head up in there now. Well, this is pretty interesting. This is uh, by the uh, Cottonwood stand right on the Grand River. There's a tree, obviously, beavers took out that cedar tree, and if you look down there on the bank, there's a beaver lodge. I guess that would be a lodge. Obviously, we're not doing much uh, damming on this river, but that's uh, quite a little journey to come up this bank. I mean, that's a good 18, 20 foot drop. And that beaver must have come up the long way around and decided uh, maybe that tree wasn't worth it. Whew. I just busted through this big patch of cedar and it is tough going. Combination of low growing cedar, multifloral rose. That is the uh, worst stuff to try to get to. Way worse than blackberries because the, the branches go out like tendrils and they get caught up in other, other trees and man, they grab you from 20 different angles. and. I'm bleeding in 20 different places, but boy, it's uh, it's thick going and there's a lot of deer sign. Just haven't found a shed yet. Well, I'm not sure what this tree stand is. I think this might be what they call Grand Central. The river's right there. I'm in a food plot. I got a hashtag spread about this one. But I think that's what that is, Grand Central. This spot is. It's right on the river. So I'll give you a 360 view. Very nice area, that's for sure. Well, I'm in this really sweet looking cedar thicket. The grass is laying down pretty good. Good thing is, there's no floral rose so I'm just gonna zag through here as much as I can for the next I don't know probably 30 minutes before I start losing daylight and then I gotta head back up to the four-wheeler uh, but man this is this is pretty stuff and there's deer droppings absolutely everywhere so I know the deer spent a lot of time in here this winter this is as likely a spot as any and I've been in some pretty good spots Well, I'm back at the Oak Dam, and 
I walked a long way around the uh, the Oxbow. Never uh, never found a shed. Um, it's getting uh, getting down past sunset. I need to head back to uh, camp, get some supper with the boys, and uh, we'll go after it again tomorrow. I, I was in some unbelievable territory as you saw, and uh, I just I can't believe I didn't find a shed. You know, when I spanned out into that CRP, there could be a hundred sheds sitting down there, and you would never find one. But uh, I was in some good territory and some good south-facing slopes, so I'm real surprised. Uh, I know it hasn't been picked over that much, so I'm going to come back again tomorrow. Tomorrow I think I'll do uh, the area around the hub and uh, see what I can find down there. So we'll see you later. So as I roll into camp, uh, this concludes day two, which surprisingly enough ended up being a unsuccessful day of shed hunting, although I covered a lot of fantastic ground. But uh, before I go, I want to tell you the tale of the missing antler. So this beautiful five-point shed is the missing antler, and Scott found this on the Little River Farm the day before I got here. So the way the story goes, a guy named Dan from Maine, uh, a forester friend of Brett's, uh, was hunting the late archery season down in Missouri on the Little River Farm. And right near the end of the day, he shot this beautiful buck. But he thought he hit it a little far back, so they decided to let it uh, go overnight and come retrieve it in the morning. Unfortunately, when they found it in the morning, the left side antler was missing. But if that wasn't bad enough, just to make things worse, uh, the coyotes had actually devastated this deer and uh, and basically ruined it. There was no uh, no meat left for consumption. When Dan grabbed the right side antler, it popped off in his hands. So that's what he was left with for the effort, a, uh, a right side antler. A hell of a right side antler, but that was it. Now they scored this antler, and it scored right in at about 73 inches. You, you double that up and you come up with 146 and you put a 20-inch uh, spread on that thing and you've got pretty close to a Boone and Crockett buck. You know, here's Brett holding up the other side and you can see, I mean, that's an impressive buck. You know, one of the amazing parts of this story is that even though several guys looked for several hours to find this antler after the fact, they didn't find it. And when Scott finally found it two months later... Critters hadn't touched it a bit, so it's in perfect shape. And you can bet that Dan is going to be one happy maniac when he puts these antlers together. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video. we got one more day left in Iowa, and it should be a good one.